Hi viewers, thank you for watching the op tips. Uh, I mostly cover how to and some advice uh, that I can offer from my career as well as education. But I do have this track going on as I learn to program in Python using this great program called Cocademy. I'm not affiliated with them in any ways, but I do see some of the challenges that I face or some of my peers have faced and would like to resolve them here. I stumbled upon this particular section as I was doing it this morning, Lesson Dictionaries. I thought it got very hard very quickly, so I would like to talk a little bit about the difference between lists and dictionaries in Python. I'm going to go into the section, Dictionaries, uh, which I just completed this morning. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how hard it got really quick. It's saying dictionaries are a little different from lists. Uh, they are um, encased in curly brackets and usually have a key value that is a string um, colon and the value that goes with the key so it's really confusing it's a key colon value and the value can be a list as well so you can imagine if it, you were doing a list it can be in potential brackets like these solid brackets square brackets um, it can be one comma two comma three um, so basically and then it, the exercise quickly got pretty hard as it asks you to you know like um, if you're doing a new entry menu is your dictionary and you're gonna assign a new key with a new value to it so your new key here can be chicken alfredo uh, and then your new value is 14.5 this is actually super super useful if you think about it Cocademy use analogy as a phone book say you've got uh, Anna and then you can look up Anna's phone number if you get George you can look up George's phone number and Anna and George would be the keys and the corresponding phone number will be the value um, and when it comes to menus it's also very helpful you have the course name and you have the price or you can have the course name, colon, a list of ingredients, uh, keywords that goes with this course name. Or um, you can have a very useful is that if you think about another application which we learn in Cocademy JavaScript track, you can actually use that to store passwords and you put some security around it so not everyone can retrieve that. But you can say, my username is tester123 retrieve retrieve my password so you have key which is test name tester123 and the uh, value will be a password so here's some use of that um, and then it says changing your mind which is how to modify this so you can you can look up each value by the key and you can remove some of these values um, or you can change it so you can remove the value by giving the key so the del function takes in um, the dictionary name and the key as its um, sort of parameter it needs that to do it but then you can look it up by the key and you can just change the value much like how you would set the value the first time uh, like in section 2 here new entries this is how you would set values the first time. If you want to change it, you can use that same thing in the changing mind section right here. And what I want to focus on is this last section, which is the hardest. Ask for a lot of things altogether. It says it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. And it tells you that del is a function that takes the key so it will delete the value. So we delete both the key and its value or you can use um, dot remove so you would give it um, dot remove is usually something that you would give its probably dictionary uh, first and you would say dot remove a value or a key from it so it takes a bit it's based on value and then it gets a little confusing here so it was first say add a key to inventory called pocket so, uh, I wonder why it's not showing here. I 
guess it didn't refresh properly. I didn't refresh properly. I'm just going to uh, command R. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Um, strange. Cocademy is not responding to me. Okay. Okay, there it goes. So, sorry about that. Um, Cocademy froze up with me for a second. I don't understand why all of a sudden it clear out my code, but I can redo it again, which is pretty interactive. So it's saying I've got this inventory dictionary. It's got gold key, pouch key, as well as backpack key. Um, and it has a section of value associated to it. So this is a list. This looks familiar. This is this is a list. But overall together it's a dictionary. So the difference is the square brackets as well as the curly brackets and the existence of whether having the key or not. So saying it's adding a new key and new value to this. So besides gold pouch backpack, there's gonna be a burlap bag. Cocademy tries to be funny by being strange sometimes. Um, inventory, it says I'm gonna sort just the pouch function. So rather than flint, twine, and gemstone, it will go gemstone, flint, and twine. I think we can check later. Um, and then it says your code here has a lot of requirements. First, it says add a key to inventory. Uh, inventory. So it's gonna be a new key um, called pocket. Okay. Uh, and then you can just go ahead and add, add some values to the pocket key in a list format. So you're gonna use a square bracket. This is a little confusing here. The square the square bracket right in front of it is actually saying it's taking that as an argument. You know, the inventory it needs to sorry not argument but it needs to reference to the key in order to you know know where it's putting the value into so I'm gonna say just to be fast I'm gonna copy and paste so I don't make any mistake usually I like to type um, okay so that should that would do and then it says sort the item store in backpack so you're gonna first try to retrieve retrieve the items from the backpack you're going to reference that by inventory key and then you're going to sort it. You're just going to use the dot method and sort so that will be easy. The toughest thing that got me thinking is how to remove dagger from the list of items stored under backpack. I'm going to try something that I didn't try in my solution just in case there's an easier way to do it. And So let me say I'm going to maybe it would work say inventory um, okay I'm gonna say inventory remove from backpack backpack so it, it needs to it can reference it, it here I'm referencing it by the key but then I'm gonna say remove by value right so I'm gonna say dagger so I'm being very very careful so I don't remove anything else let's see if it works or not and then last it was said um, you have to add number 50, so additional 50 to the number, to the gold key. So I'm going to say inventory um, gold, uh, okay, gold, um, and then it will equals to additional 50. So that's an operator for, say, additional 50. Okay, so that totally worked. I already finished the course. Um, just to be very creative, let me see if I can resolve this in any other way. Maybe using the delete method. So, may not work. Let me think about it really quick. Delete will take the key, right? It will take the key. So, so here it is really the key, right? Um, so let me just save this real quick. I'm going to reference back. I'm pretty new to this as well. But you can see i got something interesting going on here. Um, so the delete argument takes the key and then would we'll delete that value. So I wonder if I can specify the value. It may not work. So bear with me for one second. It's still not going to work. But what if I say, because this is a list. Yeah, 
Yeah, this one, I wonder if I can limit the value, but I don't think so. I think this would delete all of it, which would be a bad idea. So I'm just going to stick with what I have um, here, and that would work. And one way to help yourself look at how interesting the result is, is to print out inventory. I thought it was very interesting to look at the result because you see, gold went first initially, but it came last because it's the latest modified. So when by almost the dictionary, this is telling me almost the keys. Dictionaries are used for lookup by keys only, so the order almost doesn't matter. Unlike an index, when you reference a vector, you need to go by index, and that's order. So this is very. It makes dictionary very flexible. Um, you can just look it up by key and you don't have to worry about the ordering. Look at the inventory dictionary almost changed by the way we modified it. Goes pocket, backpack, and um, not so much pouch, so which is interesting. There's definitely some weird order of operation. Um, and then you have gold that came last. So very interesting indeed. Um, I will try to look up if there's some other creative method to solve this one. I wonder what the hint says. You can use list function with the list stored in dictionary as follows. Dictionary name list function. Very interesting. Should help you delete dagger from the list of items stored under the backpack. You can use remove. Okay, so use my method. It says Dictionary name, which is inventory, square brackets, backpack, which is a key, dot method, is a list function, which is remove, and dagger. So I, I happen to do it the way Co-Academy wants me to do it. There's definitely going to be some other methods to do it, but this way I like it. I wasn't just thinking about I didn't see the hint earlier when I saw it. I like it because it specifies exactly what I'm going to delete. If I use the delete function, then I have to, I run the risk of deleting all the values. So anything that's not very specific can potentially, um, you know, delete way more than I need to. Um, so it's good. It's the same thing when you would use a database language. Uh, for those who are familiar with SQL, you would say select um, blah, blah, blah. Say a few column names from the table name where it, you know, or you can use like delete function, but then that can be very devastating. You can drop a whole table. So you would say where, blah, blah, blah. You would specify some conditions that really, really limits to how many rows, uh, how many rows of data you're supposed to delete. And it's the same concept here. I'm trying to be very specific about only delete it from this key and only remove this value. So that makes it specific enough, I won't destroy my dictionary as a whole. And one coding, one line of code can be very powerful and devastating sometimes.